Okay, so we have gone a little far now, and uh, you know, uh, we have now like fifty percent understood what is uh, integration, how it works, right? Last video we discussed, right? What is like, uh, you know, how to create a REST API through Apex class. This video I'm gonna show you. Uh, I will just explain you this code, but before that, I'm gonna show you, uh, you know, how you can call your custom REST API from this particular Postman, right? So without Postman, as a developer, life is very tough, right? So let's. Uh, Let's just first call this particular Apex uh, REST API from Postman. Okay, so very first thing is you have to create this. This is called endpoint, right? Uh, the URL that uh, you know I have to create REST API is what? It's just a URL, right? And that is called endpoint. So the API that I have created through Apex class, how can you create the URL? Do you remember the how did we create the URL for the standard API, right? Remember the first thing that we did is we got this particular URL. This is called what? Base URL, right? So copy your base URL first. Please remember how I am creating this URL, okay? First, your base URL slash. So if it is a uh, you know custom REST API, you have to write something called service slash apex REST. This is something that you have to write whenever it, it's it's a custom uh, REST API. So first, your base URL then slash service slash apex rest that you have to write and then you have to give this particular url mapping remember the last video i told you right what is url mapping url mapping is basically the name that you give in the url mapping that identify the class name so i mean i mean best practice you should give the same class name as your api url mapping name but it could be anything okay so you are because your Postman cannot read your Apex class because of your ERP system cannot read your Apex class. It can read the URL mapping name. Correct. So this URL mapping name goes here right after service slash Apex rest slash your URL mapping. So I'll just paste it. Oh, sorry. I'll quickly copy this lead OPP. Copy this and paste it here. And now your URL is ready. Your endpoint is ready. Okay, let me first explain this post method. Okay, uh, first I will create a record. First, through Postman, I will create a record. So when you say create a record, it's basically HTTP at the rate, at the rate HTTP post, right? So let's create a record first. Then I'll try to get the record with this get method. Then I'll try to you know update the record with this patch method, and then I'll try to delete that record with this delete method. Okay. So first thing is post. Do you remember how we actually use Postman to create a record through standard API? Let's do the same way. See, when you when you have to do this post operations, right? Or any operation, first of all, what you have to do, first thing is select what you want to do here. The method you have selected. Second thing is what? You have to do this authentications. And guess what? What should, what we have to, what I, and what do we have to select here? Remember the barrier token bear a token right so you have to select this and where do you get this token from yeah so the token it will come from you know i i think you have this line of code already with you if you do not have please remember this system.debug i'm trying to print that particular uh you know bearer token okay so this is our user info dot get session id every time the session get expired you have to again take this bearer token okay so i'm just gonna call this and try to get the bearer token okay so if i open the log and go to my debug only here is my so this is my log here and if you double click on this you get the entire log and the entire log if you check the debug only you get this control c copy this particular you remember to take this escalation mark okay copy this this is your bearer token go back to your uh, authentications remove this put this here so now your authentication is done. You have given a post method, right? You have corrected, you have given the correct URL. What is next? Next is the body. What should be the body here? Salesforce understand only JSON, right? I mean, it understand XML also, but we have to pass here the JSON body. So go to here raw, select the JSON body here. Do you remember how to write the JSON? I'll quickly write it and, and show you, okay? Okay, so my uh, JSON is ready. So this is how your JSON looks like, okay? Your first name, last name, company and these are basically mandatory fields okay whatever fields you have in lead object you can pass one by one but i'm just trying to pass the mandatory field so that the lead gets created 
Now, guys, if I'm calling this, please understand this, okay? If I use this post method, this is my URL, this is my body, and if I click on send, what's going to happen? This is going to call my Apex class. So this is the Apex class. Which method will be invoked? Remember, this post method will be invoked. Why? Because you have selected here post. This is your URL. By the way, why this URL is actually hitting your this particular class? Because this, because of this URL mapping. This is the URL mapping which you have given, which you have provided in the end of your your API. This is how the connection is happening. Okay. So now this class, which is nothing but this class is actually you know this particular method will be called so check this out okay see in the method now try to understand this code okay this code is actually a ready-made code ready readily cooked code okay i mean you i did not write this code i just copied and pasted okay and same thing you also have to do in your, uh, your project right so basic code is already been written for you let me explain this code to you line number 16 uh http post is what you know already right line number 16 this is a variable i have taken called req what is the type of this variable? REST request. REST request is a, is a class in Salesforce, right? And this class has another uh, variable called, uh, static variable called request. This particular line, line number 16 is doing what, you know? Yeah, let me tell you the magic here, okay? Line number 16 is basically trying to fetch this particular JSON. Whatever JSON you are passing in the body, line number 16 is trying to fetch that JSON and putting it into REQ variable. If you go and try to, you know, put the system dot debug, right? You will see REQ has that this particular JSON body, whatever you are passing. Crazy, right? I mean, we have done nothing basically, right? Salesforce has already done this for us, right? So REQ variable is actually holding the body that you are passing. And line number 17, we are doing what? I'm trying to convert that JSON into a string. So line number 17, I've taken a string type of variable request body. And this particular thing will actually, you know, two string is a method, by the way, which will convert the JSON or anything into string. So the JSON body, which has the, which has the first name, last name, company and status, right? I have converted it into a uh, string variable. And that string variable, right, has the JSON converted string variable, right? I have to now create a lead record with that. And for that also, a piece of code, a line of code, Salesforce has already given to you. Check this out, line number 18. Line number 18 is doing what? JSON that I've got, it has to be deserialized and it has to map with Salesforce lead object fields. And guess what? Line number 18 is actually doing that. The JSON that I've got in uh, line number 16, REQ, it has to be converted, which has been converted into a string. And that string, we are trying to deserialize and put this into lead object. So line number 17, 18 is actually doing that. And finally, line number 19, we are inserting the lead. Just three lines of code, okay? And return, right? See, this return, if you do not give, then you don't get the response. Remember the line that I told you that <clears throat> every integration is basically you're sending some request from source to destination. Destination are supposed to give you a response. So once the lead is created, that lead ID will be given to you as a response just because you are returning this new lead. The lead that you're creating, no, you're returning it, right? So it's giving you the response. Now, let me show you the magic, okay? See, if you click on the send button, see what's happening here. Click on send. Oops, I got an error, okay? So uh, the error, I am getting this error because I think, um, one second, now. Huh? Yep, I have done one mistake, okay? See, uh, the spelling of service, it has to be actually services, okay? It has to be services. So your demo, uh, I mean, what do you call this? Base URL slash services okay yes i forgot to put and then apex rest, okay now your url is ready with your body with the method called post you just have to click on send once you click on send this is the magic happen right the record named rajesh strategy gets created with company called test company you don't believe me let me show you this so i'm just going to copy this and uh, go to this salesforce lead object Do you guys know that I can paste this particular ID here and go to the record directly? Yep, hope you guys know about it, right? So this is my record, Rajesh strategy and uh, strategy spelling is not correct. Um, and uh, you know, test company, right? The company is test and status is whatever status I've selected. So this record gets created. And why I'm getting this particular response? Because if you see my code, 
I'm, I'm using line number 22. I'm just trying to return the response and this is why I'm getting this response. I call this ID, okay? So this is, I, I think you understood this <coughs> post method pretty well. I'm just quickly explaining you back again what I have discussed so far. So uh, this is your Apex class. It has a URL mapping. This is your URL, your base URL till salesforce.com slash services slash Apex rest slash your URL mapping. You're using post method. You're giving this particular JSON. You can have all the fields. I just have given only four mental fields. And once you click on send, it will immediately invoke your method, which is a post method and will give you the response. The response is what? The record gets created, which I have shown you, right? And then it's giving you the ID of that record. Cool. So this is how the post method is invoked from your custom Apex REST API class. All right. Next video, let me explain in the next video, the get method, and then we'll explain the pass method and then the delete method. Hope this uh, explanation, uh, it, it seems very easy to you. I mean, again, I'm just trying to explain what Salesforce has given to us. We don't have to write, we have not written any big code to make this happen, right? See, REST, REST request, this class is very powerful, right? In fact, uh, after two, three videos, right, we will uh, try to shoot that video where your, you know, source org will try to consume that, uh, you know, uh, destination org REST API through FX class. That is also like seven, eight lines of code, right? Uh, again, I'm just going to copy this code from Salesforce article, paste it and show you, explain you how it's used. So Salesforce integration is very easy to understand it pretty well, okay? And uh, most of it, like, I mean, uh, I have seen a few development from Java.net and other things, right? Uh, compared to other technologies coding, Salesforce coding is 200% is simpler, right? Same thing if you do for other technology, you have to do so many, you have to write so many code, right? And, but with Salesforce, because it's a cloud product, all these ready-made classes, no, this class, this class is, is having those code. We are just using it. All right. So let's go to the next video. I'm going to explain you the get method um, from this particular class. See you in the next video.